I'm torn, y'all. I'm torn. You know what I'm saying? Because with this J. Cole situation, man, with this J. Cole situation, I kind of just been, I, I really didn't want to talk about it. You feel me? You know, waited four days. Where y'all at? It's like with the J. Cole situation, man, I didn't know what to say. You know what I'm saying? He came out, what, about four days ago and apologized to Kendrick Lamar. And I'm just like, man, I didn't know what to say. You know what I'm saying? My 40 plus years on this earth, this is the first time I ever seen a top tier artist like this. This is the first time I ever seen an art artist that's supposed to be at the, the, like I said, the big three, the top of the cream of the crop. For J. Cove to apologize. I'm just so torn with this whole situation for the fact that who could have seen this coming? I understand his team was like, you know, when he was on stage, you seen it. He didn't want to come out. I mean, he didn't want to, you know, his team was like, man, don't do it. Don't do it. J. Cove, no. So I just been torn, man. That's why I ain't dropped a video in a few days because I'm like, man, I don't even know what to say to y'all because the whole J. Cole situation, I just personally feel like, bruh, you just too soft, man. Is J. Cole too soft? You know what I mean? Is he just too soft for the battle? You know what I mean? It's like, come on, bruh. Like, you got to stand for something, man. I was always told you got to stand for something, bruh. You got to stand for something. You can't just, uh, you know what I mean? Somebody, it's like, you know what? It's like somebody, you know, punch you in your face. Well, before that, right? It's like somebody want to fight you, right? Somebody want to fight you. And it's like, you expecting, it's like, okay, you want to fight me, but before you fight me, right? You got to go through my partner. <laughs> You feel me? You got to go through my partner first. And I felt like with Kendrick Lamar, when he threw them shots, of course, there was that, it was it was some at uh, Cole, but it also was some at Drake. And I felt like J. Cole was supposed to respond before Drake did, which, of course, we know. The seven-minute drill, right? We know that Drake responded. I mean, excuse me. Cole responded, right, with the seven-minute drill. You know, he did his one, two. It was cool. I mean, it wasn't my favorite to beat. I mean, I said it on a, a couple of lives before. You know, I, I wasn't I particularly, I didn't like the beat, you know what I'm saying, that J. Cole was using uh, for the seven-minute drill. But anyway, you know what I mean? He did it. I'm like, okay, you know, my last couple of lives, I was like, it's finally getting spicy. I'm like, yeah, this is what hip hop need right now. You feel me? We need somebody to just get out here and just get active and just be like, you know what? Bump this, man. You said it ain't no big three. Okay, cool. Let's get down. So I'm expecting J. Cole to get down. Like, I'm kind of confused, man. Do you feel? Hit that like button as y'all come on in. We're going to chop it up, man. I gotta, we got a few things we need to unravel here. It's a few things we need to get understanding with because I'm just highly confused with this whole situation. You feel me? Like, for real, though, like, this, this, this I'm, I'm just highly confused with this whole situation, and it's like this, right? And before I get into it, well, I personally feel like it's good that J. Cole, you know, if it's affecting him mentally, I respect that. As a man, man to man, I respect that. I'm not here to tear a man down based on mentally if you feel like this is too much for you. And it's kind of funny. It's ironic, right? Because that song is called Like That. <laughs> was they was they depicting J. Cole this whole time? Was Kendrick sending a message out to everybody to let y'all know that? Yeah, Drake might be that guy, but I know 
I know that other guy. He ain't built like that. He ain't like that. Do you feel? Huh? I felt like with Kendrick, that's what he was saying about J. Cole. That like that record hit different, right? That like that record hit different when you think about just the hook alone. Let's get, I, we, we, we got to the lyrics yet. Just think of the hook. Not like that. And in true form, what do we see? So I think with, with J. Cole, right, it would have been different if J. Cole did not put out the record, man. Personally, personally, from the hip-hop standpoint, because like I said, as a man, him protecting his energy, protecting his mental, I respect that. I'm not here to try to dilute or make that feel any different than what he said. You know what I'm saying? But the hip hop in me, you know what I mean? That that you know what I'm saying? That Tupac in me, the Biggie in me, huh? The Jay Z and Nas in me, the Ice Cube West Side Connection and Common is in me. So it's just like. I, I was just confused, bro. I was confused because we're talking about J. Cole, who been saying for the last five years, you know what I'm saying? He killing every feature. Can't nobody get with him. He a body, yada, yada, yada. And then it's like, it's like Kendrick hit him in the mouth and he like, oh, I want to go home. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> It's like, it's like I said, somebody is like looking to fight, right? They like, man, I want to fight. I want to fight. Who want who ready to fight? I'm ready to go. Let's go. I'm ready to fight. Everybody ready to fight, right? But the thing of it is, somebody finally step up. That's a worthy challenger. I'm talking about Kendrick Lamar against J. Cole. We have a, a worthy challenger. You said that you about this. You said that you killing all these features and if anybody want to see you, you going to bring it to them. Okay. And this is the thing too, right? I got to say this because I watched a few YouTubers, podcasters and so on, right? And, and, and the common thing I'm hearing is like people saying, okay, this may spill off into some type of situation. And I, and for me personally, I highly doubt that because nobody that I ever talked to, even though, like I said, this is it's a, it's a smidge, a smidge of a chance that it might could have, but I'm saying very highly impossible. But some people say since J Cole, he apologized. He want to save the friendship. Who said that it won't affect the friendship? Because think about this, right? Think about this. With Kendrick Lamar dropping that verse on like that, to me, he already severed the relationship. He already severed the friendship because no matter what you do, you can't take that verse back. You can't take back the energy and how it affected you. That's why, in my opinion, with J. Cole, he didn't he couldn't match the energy or he felt like it, it was taking him too much of a dark place to match the same energy that Kendrick was bringing. So you telling me after all this, you think that this you apologizing to Kendrick is going to make the relationship as it once was before? I don't believe that. Because whatever energy Kendrick brought to you, he was feeling that and he was willing to stand on that, obviously, because he didn't apologize. Kendrick didn't apologize for nothing. So that's telling me that whatever relationship you thought you had, Kend uh, J. Cole, whatever relationship you think you have with Kendrick Lamar, it's not the same. So you apologizing, okay, that works for you. I respect that. Like I said, I'm not going to never. Knock that. I'm going to respect that. But on the flip side of that, 
Don't think that you're going to have the same relationship with Kendrick Lamar prior to him putting out this record. Do you feel? Yeah. I'm just saying, really think about that because it's like, that's why I said with J. Cove, he damn if he do, if he don't, he should have just continued on because I personally feel like their relationship is going to be effective forever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's going to be effective forever because think about this, right? Even if J. Cole and Kendrick sit in the room, it's going to be like that Jay-Z line. You know what and you know who, but I'm going to keep that between me and you. Do you feel? So it's always going to be a thing. It's always going to be a thing. So my whole thing is, with Kendrick, I mean, excuse me, with J. Cole, has he been pump faking this whole time? Because you've been talking this lyrical miracle all this whole time about somebody come see you. You're going to do this on a mic. You're going to do that on a mic. So you're trying to save a relationship to me that you can't even save. Even if you buy you apologizing, that's not going to bring that same friendship back in the way that you think it used to be or the mindset that you thought you had with this Kendrick Lamar. Are you thinking that that friendship is going to be the same? And to me, in my opinion, I don't think it's ever going to be the same because once those records is put out into the universe, once you put out them records, and the response is what the response is, in the back of your mind, you know what and you know who, but we going to keep that between me and you. Do you feel? Hit that like button as y'all come on in, man. You know what I'm saying? Because I had to wait to go live because, man, this, this is really, it really affected me because I'm like, I don't understand this, but the only thing I can think of is just that, you know, for J. Cole, he really a soft dude. You know what I mean? He's like, I guess, a, a, you know, a teddy bear out here for everybody. You know what I mean? He don't want to ruffle nobody feathers. He just want to kick his raps, you know, you know, get to talking about fictional people that he want to battle because obviously he doesn't want to battle. He just want to talk that way. You know what I mean? He want to talk that talk. But when it comes for him to actually put in that work, he's like, eh, I want to go home. <laughs> I want to go home. This is not for me. I, I thought we was just going to just, you know, kick a couple bars and it's cool. Nah, bruh. You got to really get into this thing, man. You know? So, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And I just personally feel like J. Cole, either way, you, you was going to lose this. You was going to lose this battle regardless. The friendship is going to be severed forever. Because it's always going to be a thing. And all you, all, to me, the only thing you was truly showing, the only thing you was really truly showing is, is that you was just soft <laughs> as Charmin. You feel me? You was soft as Charmin, man. So, you know, it's a saying from the 90s, man. When I grew up in the 90s, you feel me? They always said, man, don't be soft like Charmin. Do you feel me? <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't be soft like Charmin, man. Soft as J. Cole. Don't be soft like this soft Charmin right there, huh? That's a 90s term, man. Don't be soft mm -hmm. like Charmin. Do you feel soft as J. Cole? <laughs> soft as J. Cole, man. You feel me? Like I'm just confused, man. I'm highly confused. I just don't get it, bruh. You soft as Charmin out here. You feel me? And I don't want to hear J. Cole talk about no battles. I don't want to hear none of that, bruh. Know what I'm saying? I don't want to hear nothing about that tough talk, the battles. You know, I'm going to do this. I'm a lyrical miracle on the mic. I'm going to kick my one-two. Bruh, I ain't trying to hear none of that. 
I ain't trying to hear none of that no more, man. You better be coming out here being like Andre 3000 singing a flute on your albums, bro. That's what I want to hear from J. Cole. You feel me? The fall off. Oh, yeah, that's a perfect title. That's a perfect title for J. Cole new album. The fall off, huh? Let's say, hey, you know what? Check this out. How many features you think J. Cole going to have of Drake on his new album? <laughs> How many features? How many features you think Drake going to be on J. Cole new album? The Fall Off. Perfect title. <laughs> I guess he is a great MC, man. <laughs> Yeah, I guess he predicted this because he'd been said the album, you know what I'm saying? He can't wait to put it out. So, Mr. Cole, Mr. Cole, this is the fall off. Yeah. I guess he's going to ride out to the ride off to the sunset because mentally he ain't there no more. Like he said, he don't have the energy. He don't want to go to that space. Well, I don't want to hear you, J. Cole, talking about how somebody want to battle you on the mic. You know, you're going to do this, you do that, you killing features because you want to show that you part of the big three. Well, you see what Kendrick said, right? You heard what Kendrick said. So whether you apologize or not, that friendship has been severed. And in my opinion, even with Drake, because I personally feel Drake is very competitive and Drake will respond in his time. I feel Drake will respond. But how does Drake really feel about J. Cove now? You can't tell me Drake said, hey, J. Cove, just apologize to him so we can shut this down. I don't want no smoke. I don't believe that. So with all that apologizing you did, Mr. Cove, I believe your relationship with Kendrick is definitely already affected. But guess what? I personally believe with J with also with Drake, Mr. Cole, Mr. Cole, your relationship with Drake <laughs> is in the is definitely in the toilet as well. Do you feel? I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. You feel me? So I guess your I guess your mental is that important, which I respect. I respect that. But from hip hop, just as a hip hop fan, you feel me? I come from the nineties where you had hit them up. Biggie, remember when I used to let you slip on the sleep on the couch and beg that they'll let you back in the house. Now it's all about Versace. You copy my style, five shots couldn't stop me. I took them and smiled. I'm still a thug that you love to hate. We hit them up. That's where I'm from, bro. That's where I'm from. Do you feel me? I'm from that era, that Nas and Jay-Z take over in Ether. You feel me? I'm from that West Side Connection, Ice Cube against Common. Way before Drake and Common had an issue, it was Ice Cube and Common. I'm just saying, West Side Connection. That matter of fact, the more I think about it, right? The group West Side Connection, Ice Cube, Dub C, and Mac 10. That was the big three <laughs> out of LA for a moment. That was the big three. And you know what they did on that album? On that album, they dissed Common, <laughs> they dissed Q Tip. I know that's old school for some of y'all young cats. They even had something to say about New York. But guess what? Everybody they dissed, everybody they had an issue with today, they don't have a problem. See, one thing a lot of people get confused when you're talking about when you have conflict, when you have, you know, uh, I, I shouldn't say a beef, but like a, a pretty much some type of beef, or, you know, competition, I should say. One thing about competition, it, in my opinion, it brings the best out of you. And as a hip-hop fan, that's all we was looking for. Nobody was wanting blood. Nobody was wanting anybody to physically harm themselves or harm each other. 
I understand that it has a, a it, it has a, a, a you know it's a chance that it may go to the next level. But guess what? In real life, it can go to the next level. You can be playing basketball on a court right now with your friend, with the homies from the neighborhood, some people that you know that you talk to often. Y'all can play a regular pickup game of basketball, and if somebody foul you the wrong way, if somebody taunt you the wrong way, in a regular pickup, basic pickup game of basketball can escalate to a fight. So I'm just saying in life, you got to fight for something. In life, you have to stand for something, because what does the word say? If you don't have a standard, if you don't stand for anything, you fall for everything. Do you feel? Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to my channel. My name is Sean B. Stola. Come on now. Hit that like button. Smash that like. And one thing I can tell you about life, one thing I can tell you about life is don't be soft as Charmin. J. Cole <laughs> soft. J. Do Cole. not be soft as Charmin out here, man. That's J. Cove right there, man. Soft as Charmin out here, man. Soft In a lyrical Cove. battle, all he want to do is hug you, man. That's all he trying to do. He ain't, he ain't trying to do nothing else, bro. He ain't trying to do nothing else. Yeah, I want to keep the peace, you know, which I respect. But the hip hop side of me is talking right now. As a fan of hip hop music and the, the competitiveness. Because to me, you know, hip hop and sports is correlated together. You know what I mean? It's correlated together because it's like this, right? If you played any type of sport in your life, it don't have to be basketball. It could be any sport. When I play against somebody, I'm expecting them to give me their best. Whatever sport you like to play, pick up, whatever, it doesn't matter, right? When I'm playing somebody or I'm playing, playing against someone, I want them to play their best as I play my best. Whoever wins, that's who wins. And when you're talking about grown men, we like to spar. You know what I mean? It's not that I'm trying to get violent. It's not that I'm trying to belittle you or any type of thing like that. No, that's not what I'm saying. But as a man, I definitely like to test my limits. You know what I'm saying? To a degree. Because if you want to be a king, what is the, what, what is the saying is? When you want to be a king, you have to beat a king to become one. If you want to be the best, you have to beat the best. And when you think about like basketball, right? In basketball, they always compare LeBron James to Michael Jordan. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's nothing wrong with somebody saying Jordan is the best. It's nothing wrong with somebody saying LeBron's the best or even Steph Curry. But would we love to see all three of these guys play against each other? Absolutely. Absolutely. We would love to see these guys against each other. You know what I'm saying? We would love to see them against each other. And that's the thing, right? So for J. Cole to do what he did, it's like I personally feel like, you know, he just set himself up in a negative way. So even though you're trying to save the friendship, you're trying to save your mental health, 
it's going to always be affected. So my whole thing is, if it's mental, I give you that. But the friendship, the way that you have had it prior to this like that record came out, that relationship in that setting, in that form is gone. So that's my whole thing. It's like if you thought apologizing was going to save the relationship, I think you're wrong. Because in my mind, I think Kendrick Lamar was expecting J. Cole to respond, which he did. And then he quickly reneged on it after that. I think I think J. Cole reneged on that faster than Diddy paying Cassie in this situation, man. <laughs> you feel me? I feel J. Cole responded before Diddy was able to sign before him before he signed that check, send that wire. He had already apologized, man. Do you feel me? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I just can't believe it, though. I'm still shocked, be honest with you. Because if you go back, you listen to all these different records, right? Excuse me, too. Man, that's good, too. One of them little gummy bears. Oh, my goodness. But anyway. If you go back, you listen to, I'll say, J. Cole, maybe his last, especially his last album prior to this, uh, I might delete later. Listen to the album that he put out before that. And then you go through the features that he was doing. Listen to the raps. Listen to what he's saying. He was sounding like he was ready for all the smoke. <laughs> you feel me? It's like J. Cole was like, he, he like a boxer, right? You know how you're getting ready for the fight? You know how I see him taping up his hands and stuff? You know a fighter is taping up their hands, you know, you know, getting getting tapped on the chin a little bit, you know, making sure I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm active. I'm ready to go. You know what I'm saying? That's J. Cole right there. Right before the fight start, he like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm ready. His trainer come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, J. Cole. Let's go out to the ring. So they got the music playing. J. Cole walk out. You know what I mean? He walking out. Okay. He probably got that Drake playing. <laughs> you know what I mean? He got that Drake playing back to back. He like, yeah. J. Cole walking out to the uh, to the ring. You know what I'm saying? You got it. <laughs> You got Kendrick Lamar in the ring waiting for J. Cole to come down. Okay. He bouncing. He doing his diddy bop. <laughs> no diddy. <laughs> he out there bouncing. He walking to the to the ring. He finally step in the ring. You feel me? He look at the ref. He look at, you know what I'm saying? He look at Kendrick. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm, I'm ready. And right before, as soon as they ring the bell, ding, he take his gloves off. As soon as they press the, as soon as they hit the ding, he take J Cole take his gloves off. He start walking over to Kendrick like, man, hey, bro, bro, I don't want to fight, man. This is not what I want to do. This not for me. And even though I gotta respect it, I know a lot of people respect it. As a man, as a human, I respect that because at least before it really got nasty, you you bowed out. But on the flip side of that, it's like, man, you didn't all you didn't did all this pump faking. You didn't did all this talking. 
you didn't you didn't hype this whole thing up to make you look a certain type of way. So everybody around you is looking like, okay. Yeah, this is really a real thing. This is really about to go down. It's finally getting spicy. And it's like. It's funny, right? Because J. Cole had that song called Let Nas Down, right? So, J. Cole, who did you let down by apologizing at this point? Because if you let Nas down, do you think you're letting Kendrick Lamar down? That's your friend, right? You don't think that you're letting Drake down? That's your friend, right? I'm just saying, thanks for the like. Hit that like. Smash that like as you come on in. We chopping it up. Smash that like. Smash that like. I appreciate you. So it's like you trying to save a relationship that's already severed, Mr. Cole. You trying to save a relationship for who? For you? Because like I said early in this live, I personally feel like J. Cole relationship with Kendrick was already, already in the red. For even for Kendrick to put that verse on like that. Think about that. Because the shots he was taking on like that after big three is just me. I mean, he he had a few lines in there that that wasn't just, you know, kid glove lines. Those lines was like basically F our friendship. That's what Kendrick, to me, that's what Kendrick was saying through that whole verse. F your friendship, F the big three, I'm not trying to collab. And then on top of that, right, that just made me think about it. Didn't Kendrick and J. Cole was supposed to put out an album together? So, Mr. Cole, now that you apologize, do you think the album is really going to come out now? Do you really believe J. Cole and Kendrick is going to drop an album together? I don't believe it. And that's another reason if you look back on this thing, right? This is probably something that Kendrick been feeling for a while because from my understanding him did Kendrick and uh J. Cole was supposed to drop an album a few years back. So how long have Kendrick been really feeling this way? It had to be longer than just the last few months or a year or two. That's the reason why they didn't drop the album before. So even though you apologize to Kendrick I don't think you're just you're even getting closer for you guys to drop an album together. And the friendship, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're going to be cordial, they're going to be respectful to each other, absolutely. But the friendship that you had prior to that like that record coming out, that's over, buddy. I'm just saying. And with the Drake I think that when Drake, uh, you know, Drake will release a song on his own time, though. I think Drake will drop something, but it's going to come when Drake is ready to put it out. That's the difference. But one thing I can tell you about Drake, that's the difference from Kendrick. I mean, excuse me, the difference between J. Cole. Because J. Cole, <laughs> he's soft as Charmin, but Drake. I guarantee you, he will not be soft like Charmin. Hey, Do you feel me? <laughs> huh? Uh -huh. Soft as J. Cole. You do not want to be soft like that, bro. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying, man. I just can't believe it, though. You know, and it's like this, right? There have been other battles. I know other people have been saying, you know, it could go further than this, but I'm going to give you some more examples, right? T 
T.I. and Ludacris, they had a, a little a little splat, a little spat too as well. You know what I'm saying? T.I. and Ludacris had a battle. They actually live in the same city. You feel me? And they had a little lyrical battle. And T.I. and Ludacris to this day is cool. They end up doing songs later on. And I bet you, guess what, though? Thanks for the like, too. Smash that like button. Smash that like button. I appreciate y'all. I know we up late, but just come on now. Support the channel. It don't cost, it don't cost you $1 to hit the like button. You know what I'm saying? Smash that like button. Smash that like. I appreciate y'all tonight. But look. With Ludacris, right? With Ludacris and T.I., they had a little back and forth. You know what I'm saying? And today, Ludacris and T.I. are friends. They did songs together after the battle. And in my opinion, what I think with Ludacris and T.I., just to give y'all an example, because some people be like, oh, no, you know, what battle didn't lead to bloodshed and all that? With T.I. and Ludacris, they was only battling on wax. They wasn't talking about doing nothing physically to any to each other. T.I. was big at the time. You know what I'm saying? Luda was definitely big at the time. So when T.I. and Ludacris had a battle going on, it was only on wax. And they live in the same city. So that's an example right there for those who say, oh, we could have got, it could have went a different way. Well, theirs didn't go a different way. It was strictly on wax. And in my opinion, I think Ludacris and T.I. relationship actually got stronger after that. You know why? Because they both pumped their chest and responded to each other. To let you know, you may be great, but I'm great too. And as men, see this this right here, this is a man thing. When with men, we we like to have that competitive edge. We like to be tested. You know what I'm saying? A healthy test. And this would have been a healthy battle. Yeah, of course, it would have been a few low to blow, low low belts. You know, it's a low below the belt type jabs. But guess what? That's what it is. Everything in life is not perfect. Everything in life is not going to be, no, nothing is going to hit you in the gut. You're going to have to deal with gut checks in real life. So on a mic, as an MC, I don't understand how this could be so much of a conflict. But like I said, with J. Cole, his mental and his spirit and his energy, I give you that. I respect that. But the hip-hop in me is what I'm talking about right now. The hip-hop in me is like, bruh, what are you doing? The hip hop in me is like, I don't understand this. And if you don't believe me, it's a lot of artists who made statements, you know what I'm saying, on X and all different platforms that was like, wow, I wasn't expecting this. Other hip hop artists came out and said, man, wow, this, this is it? This is your king? Do you feel? <laughs> This is your king. Soft is charming out here, man. <laughs> is this the new hip hop era, man? <laughs> is this the new hip hop hip hop era? That's what I want to know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can't believe this is new hip hop era. Where you Talk all this hot voluting. You talk all this hot talk. Test me on the mic. I'm killing the features this year. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And then when somebody say, okay, I want to test you. Okay, I'm ready to get active. They swing on you. And now you saying, oh, no, I want to. I don't want to do this no more. <laughs> it was cool when I was jabbing. It was cool when I was in control of everything. 
But once you don't have that control, once you can't predict how the other person is going to respond, now you want to quit. Hmm. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, though. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's something wrong with me, man. Y'all hit that like button and let me know. You feel me? Let me know if there's something wrong with me for expecting, okay, we're going to get like a lyrical battle going on right now. Maybe it's me. <laughs> you feel me? Maybe I'm confused. Because... I thought we I thought this was hip hop, man. I thought that's what we was doing. I thought we was talking hip hop. I didn't know everybody in the game. I didn't know a lot of artists in the game like Kendrick Lamar was soft like sharp. J. Cole soft. J. Cole soft. J. Cole. Soft like sharp. Do you feel? Soft as J. Cole. Soft as J. Cole. Huh? Soft as J. Cole. J. Cole soft. J. Cole soft. <laughs> Can you believe that? Soft like Charmin out here, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. <laughs> that's J. Cole soft right there, man. That's that that's that special cut call uh cotton right there for you, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's that J. Cole soft. So when you go to now when you go to your local store, right? You go to your Walmarts, you go to your Targets and grocery stores, you ask for you ask for the J. Cole soft now. <laughs> you feel me? You don't want you don't want the ultra soft. No, 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 no. You need that J. Cole soft. That's what you need now. You need that J. Cole soft. They're like, oh yeah, we got this other brand. No, 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 no. I need it to be soft like J. Cole. Do you feel me? Know what I mean? You need the J. Cole soft. You know what I mean? What does hip hop has come to, man? You know, I read somewhere they said hip hop is dead, man. I wouldn't say it's dead, though. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's dead. It might be on life support, but it ain't dead yet. I feel like it's too many artists that still, you know, out here. That's still kicking it, man. But the battle, I got to say that how the battle used to be, especially in the 90s and early 2000s, I guess that era may be gone. That's what's gone is the is that, that battle, that Jay-Z, Nas type battle. I think that era has gone. You know what I mean? Everybody want to be like LeBron James. Everybody want to be friends, man. You know what I'm saying? Nobody want to get out here and test their skills. They just want to act like they testing something, but don't 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 try them. It's like, you know, to to a lot of folks who go to the gym, especially the guys out there, fellas, bro, when you go to the gym, you can tell a difference between somebody who really lift weights and somebody that got what they call muscle milk uh muscles. A person that lift real weights, sometimes they don't look as buff and bulky but they can still lift a lot. You know, bench press a lot of weight. 
some guys are like that where they won't show, you know what I mean? They won't show hella buff, but they, they yoked up. I mean, they cut, but they muscles is not super large, right? No diddy. And then you have other guys who drink all that muscle milk type stuff. They load up on the creatine, taking this, taking that. And they lift, they lift a little bit of iron. They lift a little bit of weights, but they ain't really truly working out. And their muscles look swole. So they walk around like they really about, about it like that. You bought it, bought it. You the illness in Nebraska. Yeah, 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 yeah. They really that buff until you test them. Oh, bro, spot, spot me. Okay, let's go. Let's do some sets. And once they get up under that bench and they try to start lifting the weights, you get to see how much they can really handle. And it's like this skinnier dude is lifting more weights than you. Like, why are you so bulked up and you can't lift no weights? That's because he got that muscle milk. He got the muscle milk muscles, bro. Them ain't real. <laughs> you feel me? He got fake muscles. No diddy. So that's what J. Cole is to me when it comes to battling somebody. You know, he make it sound good. He make it sound like, oh, yeah, yeah, somebody test me. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm a lyrical miracle. I'm going to be kicking, doing this. Wow. I'm going to come at him like this. If he say this line, I'm going to say that line. You know, they have everything mapped out. Then when they get tested, it's like, oh, no, I was just. I was just playing. I I really didn't mean it like that. I thought I thought you was just gonna just you know play along like I'm doing. Like you know, like I I got bars, but my bars ain't really they not for really battling nobody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just I was just out here pump faking. I was just you know making it sound like I'm about it. Like I'm about to do this. I'm about to do that. I'm about to you know. <laughs> but then when it's time for them to perform, it's like, uh, not that, that really not me. Like, what do you feel? I'm just saying, man, a lot of these guys, man, I'm starting to feel like some of these people out here is truly pump faking. They ain't really about what they talking about. They saying that they're about it, but they ain't really about it the way they talking it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And and it's it's really sad, though, because it's like, man, is this where hip-hop really came to? It's like, man, we done made it this far. We done made it this far for you to do this, bro. For you really to do this? Like, I'm kind of confused, man. We done got this far in hip hop and you can't even, you can't even. You afraid to battle? Like, really? Like, you really don't want to battle nobody? But you talk all this hot talk? You talk all this like, oh yeah, somebody run up and do this. Somebody say this and say that. I'm going to get like this. Now, I just be looking at these folks side eye, man. I don't be believing none of that talk, bro. I ain't trying to hear what you saying, what you talking about. You ain't really about that life. <laughs> you really not about that. You want to come off and make it seem like you really about it, but you ain't trying to do that. And that's sad, though, because it's like, this is what we was waiting on. We was waiting on the fact that we finally got a bot. Uh, not only we got a battle, but we got somebody that's we got two MCs that's worthy of having a battle. You know what I mean? It's worthy of really getting out here and getting active about it. You feel me? So I'm like, oh yeah, we we finally got something. And it's like, oh no. No, I I, I was just playing. I really didn't want that. <laughs> You know, and it's like the other question I have too is that how did how do we get to this point where you got future? This is a future and Metro Boomin album, right? 
Future and Drake supposed to be cool, but you know, the more I think about it, right? If you look at that last video, shout out to academics because he pointed that out. I was watching a little bit of his live earlier, and he was saying that uh, with the video that Drake, the last video that Drake and uh, Future did, it looked like the video, they was never together in the video, so it looked like they shot it separately. And fast forward to where we at with it today, it sound that sounds true. So that means they've been having issues, you know, with their relationship way back then. You know what I'm saying? So that just really like, okay, got me really like tripping off the fact that, man, what happened? What happened to Future and Drake? For them not to be cool no more, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, the Wait For You. The Wait For You track. When you watch that Wait For You video, go well, pay attention to the scenes because it never shows Drake and Future together. It looked like they pieced it up. Like Drake shot his whenever he shot his and Future shot his separately. And they just pieced it together, you know, for the video. But it doesn't, it don't never show them in the same shot in the video at the same time. So if that's really true, that means that they've been having issues for a while. <laughs> they've been having issues for a while. And then I knew something was up when when, when Drake and uh, 21 Savage dropped the album together. And they didn't have one feature on there from uh, Future. I at least Future, at least think Future was going to be at least on one or two songs on her loss. He wasn't on that. And then on Drake uh, last album, he said, "What Pluto do?" You know what I mean? That's a, you know, a, a name that they call uh, Future. One of his uh, AKA names is uh, Pluto. So Drake had a song on his last album called "What Will Pluto Do?" So. Yeah, man. That's the sad part. I said that in my last live too is that Drake and Future, man. It I wonder what happened, man. For this to go so bad, so wrong, but you know, in their relationship. You know what I mean? But <laughs> I tell you, man. I tell you, I just think that uh I just feel like with the J. Cole situation, man, I'm just lost for words, be honest with y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm really lost for words because it's like, you know how you can anticipate something? And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Friday, oh, yeah. Friday is going to come. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, you know, you would be excited for that to happen. Only to you get to Friday and nothing happens. You know what I'm saying? Nothing happened. And you just like, wow. I don't understand how I just get from so excited about something to just completely just like nothing. <laughs> I tell you, man. I tell you. So, and then I heard Rick Ross unfollowed Drake too. So what happened there? So you got Future, Kendrick Lamar, Metro Boomin, and Rick Ross. They all, you know, well, at least with Rick Ross, he said they said Rick Ross unfollowed Drake. And I'm like, wow, what happened there? You know what I'm saying? So. I just think that with J. Cole's situation, he made he he thinking he helping himself in this situation, but he was better off going through with the diss. Because now, you know, musically, J. Cole, honestly, in my opinion, you know, he looked very soft, very weak for this. And 
His legacy is already cemented for everything he has done already. But going forward, I don't know what it's going to look like for J. Cole anymore. You know, I really don't know. Um, because for anything, you just boosted up Kendrick Lamar even more. I feel like everybody now is going to be waiting for a Kendrick Lamar uh, song or or album. You know what I'm saying? And then, of course, Drake. You know what I'm saying? Once he responds, it's just going to be bonkers around here. But at this point, I got to say that with Kendrick, he's basically, you know, he's like the, he's not the number one, but he's definitely the number two. If he, if If Kendrick wasn't your number two out of the big three, he's definitely it now. And he's knocking on dough. <laughs> He knocking on the door to get that number one spot, but he got to go through Drizzy first, though. Do you feel? He got to go through Drizzy, through Drizzy uh, Drake before he can get the number one spot. Uh, We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out what uh, what what uh, Drake is really about, and of course. With Kendrick, we're going to find out what he really capable of doing. Because one thing I can say is that with the same energy that Kendrick was giving J. Cole, he got to step it up. With Drake, you got to be able to outwit him. You know what I'm saying? You got to do, you got to be able to do a few things. Because the way Drake, you know what I'm saying, really killed off uh, Meek Mill's uh, career, it was bad. It was bad. You know what I'm saying? Especially when he said, trigger fingers turn to Twitter fingers. You getting bodied by singing. (laughs) (laughs) Then he had the line. I know Nikki had to be pillow talking with, uh, she had to be talking to Drake. Cause how she, how did, how did, how did, uh, (laughs) Drake know about Meek Mills that, he said, uh, damn, what was the line when he mentioned? I know he mentioned it's, it's your tour, tour or your girl tour, but he also said a line that, uh, what did he say? He said another line. Damn, I can't think of it right now. If I played the song, I'd be like, oh, yeah. No, oh, he was saying reference that, uh, you know, after a while, basically, they're going to be friends. Don't be mad when y'all just friends. <laughs> and what ended up happening? They became friends. I'm just saying, bro. I'm just saying. I think with J. Cole, he definitely put like a big red, you know, a big red dot on him. Because I think that other artists now uh, most likely will be start taking shots at uh, J. Cove now, indirectly or directly. I can see somebody now making a verse saying, you know, they won't go out like J. Cove, you feel me? Or apologizing like J. Cove. Like, mm-hmm. hey. That's how the game go. Unfortunately, like I said, we said before, not everybody can go. Not everybody have that understanding. Not everybody are willing to make those sacrifices. And with J. Cole, J. Cole is definitely proven just to be so. You feel me? It's proven that. So. I appreciate y'all time tonight. I will be going live tomorrow. Around 9.30. What's the, we basically in Friday. I'm out here on the West Coast in the Bay Area. So. Uh, it's not. It's like eleven. It's not even twelve o'clock yet. It's like almost eleven twenty out here. So I will be going live tomorrow. 
I just had to hop on here and really chop it up with y'all. Shout out to all my subscribers and anybody new to my channel. Channel, I appreciate you. My name is Sean B. Stola. All I bring to you is nothing but good game, good conversation, good motivation, and hopefully some type of inspiration. Y'all hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. I appreciate y'all. So y'all have a nice night. Until next time, peace, y'all. See you tomorrow.